You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Hello and happy Friday. Welcome to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You. Lessons from the best coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors. I am your host, executive producer, director, and broadcast engineer. And I just love this show because I'm always learning something. I have handpicked a team of people who are experts, leaders in their field, and they come and present 15-minute lessons. So this is not an interview program. This is a presentation platform, and our presenters are building playlists of lessons, combining them with quizzes, and we will be rolling out our online learning portal July the 1st. So without further ado, let me bring on our experts today. Joining us from Texas, we have Diane from Hi. the UK. We have Philip, and from Texas, we have Mike. Welcome. Good morning. Hi. It's great to see all of you. Really yeah. nice to have you here. Uh, Philip, it's great to see. I love that background with the green and the map behind you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what I thought we would do is I just would like to give an overview to everyone watching about what to expect. And then I'll ask each one of you to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and the value you'll be bringing to our audience today. All right. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, this is a presentation platform. And so each of our experts will come forward. They will be soloed spotlight and they will do a 15 minute lesson. We actually have a timer to help them stay on track. And if they go over, it's okay. It can be 16 minutes, 20 minutes, as long as they're getting their message across to help make us better both personally and professionally. And if you want to watch the show afterwards, you can go to any of our social media sites. We are actually right now streaming live on Business Talk Radio for Facebook pages, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. So you can go to any of our channels and catch our shows there. We have a playlist called A Better You. Diane, let's hear from you. Please tell us a little bit about you and what we'll be learning from you today. Great, I'm happy to. Hello everyone out there. I hope you're having a great day or evening, depending on where you are. I am a children's author and I love to write books to help you embrace your imagination, to love yourself and to be kind to others. I like also to include in some of my books all about peace and love. Um, so I just love people to have a happy day. And if I could, I wish I had a magic wand that I could sprinkle around the world and make everyone sing and be happy. Um, uh, today, I'm actually going to be talking about embrace imagination and hoping to help you embrace your own imagination and be what you were meant to be on the world in this world today. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. That was lovely. Uh, let's move over to Philip. Hi, Diane. Firstly, love what you're doing and um, that, that beautiful word, kindness. We have a, a coffee mug here at the British School of Etiquette called, well, on it, it says, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. So big, big respect. And I just pray that you are able to spread that beautiful fairy dust around the world because I truly absolutely advocate that be kind uh, no matter what it really is it takes it costs absolutely nothing uh, ladies and gentlemen it's it's great Dr. Jacqueline thank you once again as always for this wonderful platform and opportunity in helping so many people around the world and please spread the word because what Dr. Jacqueline is offering is gold absolute gold with you know she's knocking on doors of experts from, from all over the world and that leads me to to share with you I represent an organization by the name of the British School of Etiquette where we have a platform helping people take themselves to the next level and it is very much about really giving people the confidence so they can elevate themselves to the next level and and, and one of our slogans here at the British School of Etiquette is very much about taking on board the power of etiquette and manners coupled with your emotional intelligence and you can absolutely go out there and make a difference make a change and get ahead in life 
Fantastic. Thank you, Philip. Mike, let's hear from you, please. It's kind of hard to follow those two. Uh, <laughs> be kind, be kind and practice great etiquette. Um, you try to do that in your everyday life and I uh, applaud both of you. Uh, I take the lesson platform very literally uh, because I will be in my series. I have an eight part series. This is part one. Uh, it's really um, an opportunity for me to give back from my years working in the human resources uh, disciplines. Uh, I wasn't a human resources by trade, by cert uh, certificate or degree or college program, but I evolved there because I had a passion for doing things the right way. I spent 40 years in media, 35 years of those at ESPN, helping to build one of the great sports franchises in the world, which continues to evolve as we speak. Today, I run a company called Rewirement Media, don't retire, rewire. And uh, what I'd like to get back is the uh, insight of HR to business managers, making business managers understand, embrace, and really look forward to uh, gaining strength and business acumen through more uh, a better understanding of HR insight. Today, we'll talk about the business design and architecture. Fantastic. See why I love this show? Look at these three experts we have with us today. I'm so excited. Diane, thank you for offering to go first. Are you ready? I am. I hope okay. so anyway. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I'm going to put everyone backstage except for you. And um, you don't have a slide deck, correct? Correct. Okay, so here you go. Wait for the timer. And there's my timer. Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson. Actually, it's more about imagination. I want you to sit back and relax. Of course, if you're driving, don't sit back and relax, pay attention and hit the replay and just enjoy what everyone's gonna share with you today. Today, I'm about embracing imagination, believing and going for it. I want you to think about going for everything that you ever imagined. You know, when we're born, or when anyone's born, it's this brand new life, so much potential to be anything and everything. We get excited when we're tiny infants, we discover our fingers, we discover our toes, we start listening to ourselves and the cooing of ourselves, and it even makes us giggle at our very own sound. It's a beautiful moment and it's something that we can reflect on, that gorgeous moment when we can be anything and everything and so much potential. And then we start to grow and we discover dancing and music of all kinds. And sometimes we do gymnastics and flips. We discover mud and we make mud pies. There's so much fun. We get dirty and we're like, get the dirt off. But it was really a fun day sliding into home at the park. Lovely. And then we look up and we see the clouds and the beautiful blue sky. And sometimes we see the super dark clouds as the storm comes rolling in. And you're like, uh oh, I better get inside. And all those are magical moments of very different feelings that happen. And then as we're growing, we discover jobs from different family members and friends. Firemen, firewomen, nurses, teachers, painters, garbage collectors, they're very important too. We need everybody and everybody has something to give on earth. We have different levels, but as long as we're happy and providing and feeling good inside, then that is awesome. And as we discover all these different things, playing the trumpet, playing the saxophone, even the oboe. It is a blast to discover. And the dreams and the possibilities start to take place. And we start seeing all and thinking about all the different things we can do and be. And then life happens. We get older 
and we have start to have friends and we love our friends but some of our friends are like oh you don't want to do that are you crazy and we have teachers and some of our teachers really inspire us and then we have some teachers are like yeah you're not ready for that yet you'll get there but you're not ready for that and it does something to you not that the teacher meant to do something to you she was trying or he was trying to get you where you needed to be for your growth, but it still did something mentally inside of you where you thought, I can't. And we are like, oh my goodness. So we start to question things and we have a little rewind of our life where for one moment we were thinking about, I think I'm gonna be a nurse. That's what I wanna be, a nurse. And then someone says, you know what? You're really bad at fractions just forget being a nurse there's too much math and you're like oh i can't do that hmm i really thought i wanted to do that but you're right i can't do that and you rewind and you start thinking about the things that you can't do instead of the things you thought you could do what is it that we start listening to those voices of i can't instead of the voice of I can. It's a natural thing. We all do it. And trust me, I've done it many times throughout my life. But today, I want you to listen to that positive voice. I want you to tell yourself, I can. You can. I can. I want you to say to yourself, and you can write it down and maybe even get a book that's just your positive book and you write i can write i can tell a story i can write a story i can build i'm building a model my one of my brothers loved to build little model cars he'd get those model kits and he would build things and it was so much fun to watch him do he stopped doing it though when someone told him you'll never be able to build a car in real life you don't live up north where they build cars because <laughs> back in those days you only thought of this one area where they built the cars what is it that does that so again go back to i can i can whittle i can sing i can paint i can be whatever I want to be because I'm telling you, you can do it. It might take some time. It might take a lot of practice and a lot of hard work, but that's okay. You're working towards a goal and a dream. What I want you to do now is I want you to close your eyes. And I just want you to sit back and I want you to relax. And I want you to visualize, because your eyes are closed. Your eyes are closed. And I want you to visualize a beautiful blue sky. And the birds are singing, and there's all different types of birds. The robins are chirping, the sparrows are singing up high. The hummingbirds you can barely hear, but you can just imagine the flapping of their wings. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue sky. Oh, what is that I see? A big, puffy cloud, a giant, puffy cloud. And it's just rolling along, rolling along. It's taking a shape. Her eyes are closed. Use your imagination. What shape do you see? Enjoy the moment and let that cloud take a shape. Is it a teddy bear? Is it an alligator or maybe a dinosaur? <gasps> what is it that you see? Keep your eyes closed and just enjoy the peace and the smile that comes over your face because you gave yourself a moment to relax. Keep looking around, enjoying the day. Look all around, up and down with your eyes closed. 
here comes another cloud. Do you see it? The cloud's rolling along. It's taking another shape. Oh my, you have two clouds with imagination. What is that second cloud? And feel beautiful inside just thinking about what that cloud shape is. What's this? The little kid is coming out in you. How exciting is this? Think back to that moment. Just a beautiful moment. Keep your eyes closed. Back to that young day, a special fun day. And I want you to think about that happiest moment on that fun day. I can think of a day when I was sitting on the back porch. I have a little back porch, actually just little steps. And I had my little kitty cat angel and I was petting her and she watched me make mud pies. What is that special day for you? Another special day I had was out in the backyard on the swing set, doing the flips and flipping all around, or doing the flip and then running to the swing and then swinging high up into the sky. Think of that moment as a kid where everything was carefree. You're there with your younger self, Say hi to your younger self. Hey, buddy, where have you been? It's been a long time. What have you been up to? I thought you wanted to do blah, blah, blah. Well, let's get back on it. I know you can do it. Remember, I always told you you could. That peaceful moment. Open your eyes. And sometime share with me what you saw in your clouds because I would love to hear. I love to find teddy bears, but sometimes I actually have found kitty cats and alligators. It's always so much fun to use my imagination. Saying hi to yourself, your younger self is important. We should always try to bring out that kid in ourselves. You know, at Christmas time, my kids are all grown up, but I still give them one toy. Santa brings them one toy because I want them to always remember the kid inside because it helps keep them magical and happy and centered. So now we've discovered how easy it is to embrace imagination. We saw the clouds rolling along. We were able to say hi to our younger self. And now what I want you to be able to do by recalling your younger self is think about what is it that you want to get across in the world? What message do you want to leave? Especially if you want to be a writer. What is it? For me, it was embrace imagination, to love yourself, to help bring kindness to the world, and to be kind to people. Don't be a bully. And to embrace people, even if they're a little different, because they could be your very best friend if you just give them a chance. So today, what is the message that you want to get across? And write it down. Maybe you loved mysteries and so you want to write a cool mystery story. I'm telling you, you can. You know, there's a saying that you become a lot like the people you run around with. So if you run around with a lot of singers, you're singing all the time. And before you know it, you can sing. If you're running around with a lot of people who love to write and tell stories, you become better and better at storytelling. That is the magic of being with people who understand you, who get you, who help you become the better you, the version you were meant to be. So yes, in life, we have to work, we have to bring in the money, but there's different 
different journeys in life. There's different chapters. I was a teacher, a mommy, a singer on stage, and now I'm a writer, embracing every single moment. It's because if you embrace imagination, if you believe you can, you will. You have to imagine yourself doing it in order to become it. So every single day, tell yourself, I can, I will, and figure out the steps to make it happen. And you can always email me because the one thing I love to do is to connect with people and help them be the person they meant to be. So the takeaway today is love your imagination, love yourself, and embrace the world around you. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. <laughs> that was excellent. You know what? I love thinking about my younger self and I was on the swings. I love the swings. It's just such a carefree feeling. And I don't understand why now, at least everywhere I go, there's a sign that if you're older than 12, you can't go on the swings. <laughs> I don't know if that's just a New Jersey thing or not, but that was beautiful. I love the animation in your face, and I love how you just stop. You didn't have to every second, and you know that really has a lot of impact, but fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go over to Mike and Philip just for some quick comments for Diane. Well, I love the opportunity to uh, say I can every day. I think that's an important part of uh, looking forward in life. And I'm, I'm, I made a mental note that uh, I always think that memories are the free library that we have in life. So right. as, you, as you grow older, you rely more and more on the memories and that's your own free library. We all have a library stored in our imagination. And I, and I thank you for helping us to uh, remember to pull something out of that library and embrace it. Thank you. I love that library comment. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. And I want to clarify, Mike is joining us from Connecticut. He's not in Texas. <laughs> I, do have part, I do have partners in Texas, and I love Texas, but I'm, I'm located in Connecticut. That's, that's fine. Thank you so Beautiful much. state. Mm -hmm. Philip, let's move over to you, please. Uh, yeah, I, I literally escaped, and uh, it was just beautiful. You've got such an incredible voice when you, when you really should share that journey with people. You, your passion is just extraordinary. And... Um, this is what life's about, ladies and gentlemen. You know, as the famous Ford Motor Car, uh, you know, founded Henry Ford, if you think you can or you think you can't, you, you're both right. You know, so life is all about your mindset and how important your mindset is. And we need to check in with ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, someone once shared with me not so long ago, and I was um, I was given the opportunity to, to be speaking um, on a platform. And this woman said, you know, the only constant... Uh, the only constant in life is change. That's number one. Number two, we often ask ourselves, why is this happening to me? Poor me, why me? Why don't we turn that around and say, well, why is this happening for me? And I just want this to be something really uh, very powerful, just to compliment Diane, what you're sharing is, it's invaluable. Um, mindset is everything. And, you know, not to steal your thunder, but we literally have a program called Mindset and Manners, where we really work with the teenagers on giving them this amazing tool of, of daily affirmations and being positive and anything is possible. Anything is possible. And if you dream big enough, let your dreams scare you, you know, go out there and let them scare you because this is what this is all about. I love that. Absolutely. Fabulous. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you all. We're going to take a quick break and hear from a couple of our sponsors, and then we'll be back. And Philip will be ready for his presentation. Yes? Super. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us here today on A Better You. We'll be right back. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Story Garden. Your host, Diane Baim. I'm so happy to have you here today. Diane Floyd Bain tells wonderful stories that warm the heart, spark the imagination, and unite people and families across generations. For children, Diane's Harry the Camel connects with all of us who've ever wondered how different our lives might have been if only we'd been born something better, like a wonderful horse instead of an ordinary camel. In the end, we all learn along with Harry that there's nothing better than just being yourself. 
Diane's little girl in the moon looks down on earthbound children and wonders if they know she's just like them. A story of love, home, and the bond between mother and daughter, its powerful theme that we're each of us different yet all of us the same, plants a seed in children that promises to blossom within a loving and trusting grown-up. Diane's new biography, Rise, recounts the experiences of her grandmother, Ruby, to reveal the hidden strength of the human spirit. Ruby's story inspires all of us to become the best versions of ourselves. You'll find all of Diane's delightful books and much more at dianefloydbame.com. Visit d-i-a-n-n-f-l-o-y-d-b-o-e-h-m.com. That's dianefloydbame.com. It's what we do together that counts. The Big Alliance Story, a true story about faith over adversity, perseverance, and entrepreneurship. Read Earl's story and how he became an entrepreneur. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible.com. For more information, contact Earl Hurd at earlhurd at bigalliance.com or call 1-800-460-4242. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello and welcome back to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You. Lessons from the best, the best who they are, coaches, <laughs> consultants, and trusted advisors. We just heard from Diane and now Philip is going to lead us through his presentation. Are you ready to go, Philip? Ready when you are. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I'll put everyone backstage and then I'll put up the 15 minute timer. A very, very warm welcome to wherever you are on this amazing day here in, uh, at Dr. Jacqueline's studio and giving you some tools that will really give you the opportunity to put your best foot forward. I would love to share with you today something that we all have the opportunity to do, and that is to polish ourselves, to give ourselves the opportunity to put our best foot forward. And when it comes to whether it be friendships, relationships, or business, it is about building friendships and connecting and relationships. This is what this is all about. So here at the British School of Etiquette, we run a program called The Polish Professional, and it literally is in the title. It's about absolutely taking the skills that you require on a day-to-day -day basis in your life and in your business and elevating yourself to another level. Now, obviously, I cannot give you a full sort of brief on the, on the full Polish professional, but what I would like to do is take some snippets from the Polish professional. The first thing is we judge someone within the first two to six seconds. We shouldn't judge, and I think I've shared this with, 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 with you in the past, but we do. So how you dress, how you put your clothing together, the colors you choose, the, the um, attire you choose is my dress code appropriate for the industry I'm in. And I always say always overdress rather than underdress because in that way you can always slightly derobe if necessary to fit in with your fellow colleagues and the people that you are engaging with. So at the end of the day, it is very, very important that we here at the British School of Etiquette share with you how you can actually do that through your image and through your consult, through, through how you engage with people. So I'll be back. I'm right back. Sorry about that. So it is, it's how you present yourself as a presenter um, in any sense of the word. So whatever you wear will always make you stand out for the right reasons. You don't want to stand out for the wrong reasons. So 
remember business attire is very, very important. And something I want to share with everybody about business attire, it's not about buying and, and, and using the brands. You don't need to do that. It's not about the bling bling. It's about finding clothing that best suits you and the colors that best suit you. The second thing that I think is fundamental when it comes to business etiquette is how do we connect and how do we greet people? Remember, people do business with people they like and trust. So it is about your authenticity. It's about you being able to put your money where your mouth is. So when it comes to connecting with people, incorporate what we call polished language skills or uh, language skills that really give you the opportunity to engage and connect with people. Don't go in to business meetings talking at a different level to the people you're connecting with. In other words, using big words that no one can understand. You need to be able to describe what you do and how you do it in very simple terms, so much so that a six-year-old can understand exactly what industry or what you do for a living. Don't be a clever clogs. We have Peppa Pig here in the United Kingdom and the, the elephant in the, in, in the program is the clever clogs and no one actually gets the clever clogs. So ladies and gentlemen, it's about your ability to communicate with beautiful polished language skills or language of the professional. Things such as how may I assist you or how may I uh, help you or may I offer you or may I invite you this way. These are the professional language skills that we here at the British School of Etiquette really delve into when we're working with people uh, specifically in the hospitality sector or in the retail sector, luxury brands. And this is the opportunity for you to really come across in such a professional manner. It gives you this confidence when you know the correct terminology and the correct uh, words that you incorporate and use on your day to day basis. The third thing I'd love to share with all of you is about the importance of making eye contact with people. Really, really fundamental. This is one of the key ingredients of connecting with someone. Making eye contact with someone in any given situation is hugely important and powerful. We need to connect with people for a minimum three seconds, long enough to know the color of their eyes. Then we go to the human triangle and we stay connected, looking at the nose, looking at the chin, looking at someone's ears, but stay connected. Do not break rapport with the people that you're engaging with. The, the, the second thing along with your eye contact is your beautiful smile. Engage with an engaging smile. Smile with teeth. And unfortunately for those of you out there, we often have to guide and steer people who, who don't exactly have great teeth to go down the route of doing something about their teeth so that it elevates their confidence so they can bring a beautiful smile when they're engaging with, with anyone that they come into contact with. And the third one is, as and when it comes back, hopefully, hopefully in the near future, is a good solid firm handshake, not a bone crusher, a good solid handshake. And for the ladies out there, a firm handshake from you is taken very well, is well received and, and is, the, is the right thing to do. We don't want to do what we call the wet fish. We definitely don't want to do that. So good firm handshake. Now in the business world right now where handshakes are definitely not popular or in fashion, I would just go and place my hand over my heart and give a nice greeting like that. That happens a lot in the Arabic community. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful connection of your hand and your heart connecting or the namaste, which you will often see me do when I'm connecting with people um, through the Zoom channels because even through Zoom, there is very strong business etiquette key skills that you need to incorporate. So on that note, when you are doing your, your, your Zoom calls, be punctual. So business etiquette, rather be an hour early than a minute late. Be punctual in everything you do. So for those of you who are now able to go into your offices or are still attending Zoom meetings in the, in the business environment, get to your destination as in your meeting at least five, 10 minutes beforehand. Because if your meeting starts at 10 o'clock and you arrive at 10 o'clock, you are already late and being late is is disrespectful it doesn't sh sh show you up in a good light and you are stealing time from the other people or the person that you're meant to be meeting so punctuality is fundamental and i do know that some countries are fastidious about punctuality and other countries really do need to brush up on their punctuality so please understand that being punctual is an absolute key ingredient when it comes to any form of etiquette but predominantly our business etiquette. It shows that you are respectful and take uh, the scenario very, very seriously. When it comes to the business etiquette sort of realm that we deal with, we talk about presentation, as in not just how you present your clothing, but the attention to detail. So for example, if I had the, the privilege and opportunity to meet any of you and in person, I would hand you a pen as a gift, and I would hand it with what we call tidy hands, two hands, or with one hand, rather than just handing a pen over. So it really does boil down to that lovely attention to detail. Tidy hands is what it's all about. 
about. Many, many years ago, when I first um, started traveling across to Asia, for some of those of you out there who absolutely understand the Asian approach in handing business cards, they give a, a business card with double hands, with two hands, and they hand it facing you so you can read the person's name and the industry they're in, but they use what I call tiny hands. And it is such a wonderful, delicate touch. As a result, I implement that exact same business card uh, delivery to any people or to the people I come into contact with. And the amount of compliments or comments I get is absolutely unbelievable. Now, on the business card front, it is, again, going back to the attention to detail. Have a business card that, A, people can read and see, especially in bad light. It's not about you. The business card is not about you. It's about the person you're giving the business card to. Remember that. Everything we do is thinking about other people. This is how you will build incredible connections and an amazing rapport with people globally. So when we hand that business card out, it's about the other person. In doing that, make sure that you've got a good quality business card. Now, for those of you who can't see um, me with my business card right now, you're listening on the radio or on the internet, it's a very solid business card. This is almost the thickness of a credit card, maybe an overkill, but it's a talking point. It really does catch people's attention and it really does... Um, make you memorable. Make yourself memorable for the right reasons rather than the wrong reasons. Now, here's something we teach through all our programs, and that is never deface someone's business card. Never write on a business card in front of anybody. This is predominantly fundamental when it comes to the Asian culture. The Japanese will absolutely be so uh, offended by you writing on their business card. They may not show it, but I can assure you you will, you, you, you're, gonna not, you, you're not going to be in, 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 in their good books, and it could even be a deal breaker. So much so, there was a story about a Japanese gentleman who handed a business card to a potential, um, a potential business person, and the deal was being signed, and everything was going really, really well. And toward the end of the meal, the person that received the business card started using the Japanese gentleman's business card as a toothpick to clean his teeth. And unfortunately, that landed up, as you, I'm sure, understand, it went down downhill and the deal uh, fell apart. It's literally that fragile. So ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to your business etiquette and putting your best foot forward, it's all about that attention to detail. It's all making sure that what can I do for you attitude? How can I help you? And if you go out there looking for uh, helping people and, and finding areas that you can solve a problem and go out there with the view to making a difference, you will always find there's an opportunity for you to do good business. Now, in that, uh, we, we, we focus also, we couple uh, our programs and our courses with emotional intelligence, EQ. For those of you out there, your emotional intelligence is something that you can really build and develop, whereas your IQ is very, it's challenging to increase your IQ. So EQ is a fundamental ingredient in all our lives. All of us have the ability to learn about emotional intelligence and we have the ability to study it. We run the most phenomenal program called Leading with Emotional Intelligence. And for those of you who are out there or business leaders, run your own businesses, or just want to learn how to engage and build your EQ for your own, own, for your own purpose, but not only that, it'll be far wide reaching with all the people you come into contact with. And one thing that'll really help you is your relationships across the board. So leading with emotional intelligence is an amazing, amazing opportunity for you to really take on these skills that you can elevate yourself to a completely different level. The fact that you can actually do the job, in other words, you're bright and you know how to do the job is one thing. But when you can lead with EQ, good etiquette and good manners, you will start to soar. There was actually a research done in the United States of America quite a few years ago uh, with 2 million people. And they discovered through those 2 million people that the people with good etiquette and manners and strong EQ are far were, were, more, were making more money than the people who lacked an EQ, etiquette and manners. Almost uh, the, the people that were really strong in EQ, etiquette and manners and engaging with people were earning between twenty-five dollars and $35,000 more a year because of their wonderful approach and engagement with people when it came to relationships and business. So from, from me to all of you, uh, I really want to share and just sort of sum up. Always try and put your best foot forward. Really make a big difference in everything you do. Really try very, very hard. Don't look for the excuses. You know, we, we, we were listening to Diane earlier. That word can't or that's not going to happen for me or I will never get the job. 
I want you to start shifting your mindset. I'm going to make an effort. I'm going to try and get that job. I am going to pursue that career. I'm going to put my best foot forward. And for those of you out there that are dialing in today across wherever you may be in the world, we here at our organization are absolutely passionate and focused about helping you take your business or you to your to the next level and beyond. So I hope there have been a few little key, key skills that I've shared with you. It's a 15 minutes tends to rush away with you, and I apologize for that little earlier interruption um, that kicked in there. It wasn't obviously planned, and I hope I was able to pick up where I, where I sort of uh, had to leave the screen. So please do feel free to engage with us on any level, and, and let us know if we can support you uh, on, on, on any sort of level uh, whatsoever. Remember that business etiquette is about having a what can I do for you attitude. So when you go for your networking, have a what can I do for you attitude. Carry a good quality business card with you. Learn to follow up. How many of us out there never follow up? We take people's business cards and we never follow up. That follow up could lead to amazing things. So do that and make sure you are 100% clear on your message when you follow up. The final thing I want to share with all of you is we work heavily or clearly on your elevator pitch. What do you do? You need to be able to connect with people. You've got 30 seconds to make an amazing impression. The first three, four, five, six seconds are gonna be on how you presented yourself or your clothing, your posture, your body language, the power of your body language. The next 23 to 24 seconds, you need to hook people. You need to be letting people know what you do, what problem do you solve, and you need to let them know and leave, sorry, let them let leave them wanting more from you. So in other words, they say, what do you do? Wow, could you share with me? So if you come up with a really dynamic elevator pitch, it'll open doors for you. And I'm not talking about one, one elevator pitch. I'm talking about elevator pitches that tend to uh, focus on the various mindsets of people. So there are people out there who are far more uh, right-brained as in more creative and they see things very differently to someone who might be a left-brained individual who sees things in facts and figures and statistics and they want results. So make sure that your elevator pitch connects with the audience that you're engaging with. And I really hope and pray that all of you uh, can take away something from this uh, moment that I've had with all of you. And I thank you so much, Dr. Jacqueline. Thank you very much for this opportunity. The Polish Professional from the Polish Professional. That was outstanding. So many great points. Uh, I just was kind of stuck on the business card because I've had so many different business cards and I really never thought about designing it for the person I was giving it to. I just thought about how it reflected me and, and what I'm doing. So that was a huge takeaway for me. Thank you. I think, Dr. Jacqueline, you know, the business card is an extension of who you are. So really think about what this, what, 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 what effect this business card has when you do hand it to someone. Think of it as you're handing almost, you, you know, you're handing your, your, um, your prowess, you know, you're handing them a so-called, you know, resume. So for example, I just have to pick up there. So let's say we didn't know the brand Nike and Mike worked for Nike, or let's say, you know, for example, when ESPN launched and Mike handed his business card and said, hello, my name's Mike and I work for ESPN. And the next day I'm looking at this and I'm going, I'm a nice guy, but ESPN, what the, what is ESPN? <coughs> and then all of a sudden I look at the back and boom, it just spells it out for me. Sporting world, sporting world, sporting world, boom, 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 boom. We cover the football, this, this, and that. Now I've connected. So ladies and gentlemen out there, when it comes to you know your business cards, use the back. If, you, if you're in a generic industry that doesn't, the name doesn't tell you what they do or it's, if it's not in the brand, then use the back of your business card to share with people your skill set or the industry that you're in because it'll make a huge difference. Brilliant, thank you for that. Philip, how can people get in touch with you? We are streaming your banner, but for people on the radio? Certainly, uh, the British School of Etiquette.com, so the three W's and the British School of Etiquette.com. And if you would like to email us, if you'd like to book a chat with me, I'd love that opportunity. It's hello at the British School of Etiquette.com. Thank you so much. Mike, over to you for your feedback for Philip. I loved it. I, 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 my entire uh, eight part lesson that I'll be doing uh, starting today is about business leaders and what business leaders do. And one of the uh, uh, forward or future lessons will uh, ha handle a little bit of the of the emotional uh, quotient, the EQ. And I love that. And 
it's all, but I, I, I don't even talk so much about the way you dress. It's the way you communicate. It's just as important when you're not seen, but, but heard through communication. It's just as, just as important. And I love the, the fact that it's reinforced so wonderfully by Philip. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Diane. I did three pages of notes. Can we not interview? <laughs> it was fantastic. And um, I also did. <laughs> it was yeah. great. It was fantastic, right? <clears throat> and so important in today's world because there was a time in our education that we actually taught how to answer a phone properly, how to dress properly, how to sit properly for an interview. And, and so what Philip's um, offering is just invaluable. You have to know how to sit properly at an interview. You have to know how to dress for that particular interview. Everything you said was just right on the money and um, just it's so important for people to know how to handle an interview and even if they ask a hard question to have a face where it didn't even phase you that you can just go right on through. Um, there, it was just amazing. I loved every bit. I'll probably re-listen to it. <laughs> it was great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I really wanted to try and give a little bit of uh, material that people could at least sort of start to think about these sort of things and you know it is you know you, you, the way you speak the way you answer a telephone the way you connect an interview what is your body language saying you know you will you will have the opportunity to put your best foot forward and again dr jacqueline knows and we, we shared this uh, i think it was last week about having uh, incorporating the six second rule in your life and stopping and pausing and thinking things through because we we tend to rush into things um, and that's when we get a little bit clumsy or we make a mistake because we're not present and so business etiquette for me it's social and business etiquette belong together you can't have one without the other but it is fundamental you understand that business etiquette is just such a key ingredient and you know you talk about clothing you talk about how you present yourself I know for a fact and psychologists have shared this with people that when you dress for the occasion it elevates your mindset you feel incredibly powerful you, you feel invincible sometimes so they talk about put on your power suit ladies put on your power suit gentlemen because boom, you will absolutely you will start to live how you feel and then this is something which is just there's, there's so much attached to all of this. I mean, I just scratched the surface as I'm sure everyone understands. No, I appreciated the highlight of it all. And, and I also want to say that I would always tell my students when I was in the classroom and even my own kiddos, you're not going to school messy. You are going to school dressed to learn because when you are dressed properly, you will learn. If you feel messy, you won't learn. Does that make sense? What do you think? 100% mindset again. You know, no disrespect. If you have a tidy bedroom, tidy desk, you're going to get more done. You're going to be far more. And not only that, you're going to be taken seriously. You know, here's an interesting scenario. So, Dr. So go, going back to Henry Ford, Henry Ford was meticulous in interviewing people for, for the job. And he would invite them to a restaurant. And firstly, he'd look at the punctuality, he would see how they engage with the staff. He would see how they dressed. He would see, could they make small talk and connect with the people around the table? When the food arrived, did they, were they quick to throw salt on their food? Bad decision maker, they didn't taste the food first. So there's a lot to be said about all of this. This is, this is really understanding about really being polished. Um, and this is not about putting it on. This is a really adding huge you know, value. Dr. Jacqueline and I discussed this last week. Be the person you would like to meet and you know, really make an effort that you are re representing yourself. Right? You're the only person representing yourself. What are people saying about you when you're not in the room? You want people to become your advocates. You want people to be shouting from the rooftops. You must get hold of Dr. Jack and she's an X, Y, and Z. You must speak to my friend Diane. You must speak to Mike. But, and, and this is exactly how this all works. I love that. I'm smiling because I, just thinking about what you said about how you dress, this particular dress that you, you can't see, but um, I, I was in New York and I had to go into this meeting. Something came up with an executive I was working with and it was not going to be a pleasant conversation, but I was dressed to the nines. I had this dress on certain earrings and I had a little shawl and I had my heels and I just, I was ready for this unpleasant conversation because I felt so confident because of how I was dressed. So I think there's a lot to be said about that. Really great points. Thank you. 
we are going to take a quick break and then we're going to be back with Mike and your presentation is so patient backstage. So thank you so much. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Located at 121 Haddon Avenue in Westmont, New Jersey is Margie Cedrone, artisan jeweler. Margie's been in business for more than 30 years. She works with her clients to create custom pieces of jewelry to reflect their personality and help them make their own bold statement. Starting in the renowned Jewelers Row in Center City, Philadelphia in 1988, Margie works directly with her clients to develop one-of-a-kind pieces such as necklaces, engagement rings, wedding bands, unique watches and tennis bracelets, as well as a myriad of rings and earrings for everyone in your family. She also has worked directly with Dr. Jacqueline over the years, creating unique pieces of jewelry to reflect her personality. She does pearl stringing and repairs on site at 121 Haddon Avenue. Call or text Margie at 215-384-7155. Margie Sajone Jewelry is open by appointment only. Make your own bold statement. Have you just lost your job or have been laid off and you are looking to transition to a new job or career? Maybe you have even tried submitting tons of applications and yet you keep getting turned down for jobs you qualify for. Don't wait until you become overwhelmed with rejections when you can easily transition or get your dream job. Let MJW Careers guide you to the right career path and a better, brighter future. At MJW Careers, we know what hiring managers are looking for and our goal is to land you the job you deserve. What makes MJW Careers a wonderful provider over other services is our pragmatic and scientific approach to resume writing. There are rules, there are visual cues, there are content best practices. We understand those and work within the boundaries to ensure our clients' messaging appeals to the decision makers. Our career consultants will help you transition into new roles quickly and effectively. With our experience in virtually every industry, we will provide direction in the frustrating job market by helping you write a customized, professional resume and prepare you for your interview as well. Join the great number of people we have helped scale up to greater things in their careers. Let us help you on your career journey. Come visit us, www.jobstickers.com to learn more and grab a free resume review or ebook. Every day it was the same old story. I worked hard to make sure no one noticed what I was dealing with, but my stomach never cared where I was. And the pain just kept coming. After too many close calls and even weight loss, I had to do something. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation helped me realize what was going on and even helped me find a specialist. Don't hide your symptoms. Get help at SpillYourGuts.org. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello and welcome back. We are thrilled to have you with us today. Philip Sykes just presented and uh, we have learned so many things from you and also from Diane. And now it's Mike's turn. Mike, we are excited for you to be with us on the stage. Are you ready to go? I am ready. I usually tell people to uh, get their caffeine just before I go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going oh, yes, to minimize everyone. Perfect. And I'll put up your deck. And if okay. you could just wait for the 15 minute timer, I'm going to remove myself. Great. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, for helping me and ha having me on your show again today. Um, these lessons that I've got are designed to give business managers a general understanding and a working foundation of the many disciplines of workforce management and the HR role. It's really to make business leaders better when it comes to HR competencies. It's not meant to be an HR certification course. Instead, it's HR insight for managers. Content is contemporary, it's fluid, 
Um, there's many other uh, ideas and so on that will, will be coming out in the, in the next lessons. Many of the best applications of the current HR and workforce management will be covered. So I will at times refer to HR uh, as advocacy. I believe that the term HR has run its course because I recommend it because it's very positive. The word advocate is very positive, it sends off a positive vibe, and it supports both business and human resources advocacy. These lessons are meant to help business, to help business, help business managers, often first or second tier managers. So they're early in their career with an inside look at the HR practice, tips for learning and applying some of those into their regular routines. It makes a business manager stronger. Why? America has an endless number of small companies and major corporations. We'll focus on business and people. The life cycle, Think of the term life cycle. The life cycle of an employee is as significant a roadmap as the production supply chain for any product manufactured. Without rules and organization, however, businesses fail, economy suffers. So I'll talk about theoretical practice, offer some solutions throughout these lessons, and some endorsements of the best business uh, or human capital protocols. HR blends people management and business support. They have a, a, a dual role. It's so important that new managers understand more about the soft skills that can produce good, good results and grow leadership. It's also important for a business manager to know where your business fits into the marketplace of any given company or industry, because that will strengthen the manager's acumen. So I anticipate that participants from both the HR and the business side will be part of these uh, lessons and, and take part. So it's good for both to know that each side is covered and each should understand how to embrace each other's specialty areas. And at the end of the lesson, we'll have uh, a brief review. When, it, when it's online, there'll be a brief review. <clears throat> so let's start with the basics. The more information a shop or a business owner can understand about themselves will add value to the specific HR discipline. Business leaders should know how to quantify their organization. What types, how many, and how they are paid are three important questions to start with. Who reports to whom and how that comes about is a very important component. Understanding the basic structure is a good start. The roles inside the company are important to understand by the titles and areas of responsibility. How relevant are these titles in the industry? Titles are very important, very relevant to the person who holds it, whether or not, or regardless, if they're, if they're paid fairly or not, the, the role is very important to them, the title. So compensation is typically based on skills, experience, marketplace, geographic and demographic details. They all fill into that role, into the title. The hierarchical structure simply means how the pyramid leads to the one in charge. Do the areas of responsibility fit the role and expertise of the correct managers? So can the leaders educate, evaluate, and effectively manage their staff? Very critical if you want to set your business up for success. So how does IT work in your business structure? Email, company news, benefits, performance management, they're all uh, examples of uh, good communication and where IT is critically important to set it up right. So let's build a business. An organizational chart is a key representation of a company, no matter the size. Think of the three term, these three terms when you're building or referring to an org chart. Three terms, roster, real estate, ranking. Each employee should show up on the chart once. Start at the top of the company and the pyramid uh, reveals below. It, de it depicts the responsibility of each over those below them. The reporting structure, the advancement and performance structure should all be built in. So it's a great hour, uh, it's great discussion to show how the organization's efficient setup helps to cover the necessary business needs through an organizational chart. A well-oiled org chart would have the right order in the roles, the responsibilities, the workflow, and the workforce. So it's really the supply chain and the and the workforce should coincide with graduating ex expectations as you move up a chart. The financials are also important. They're also part of an organizational chart. How much you can spend or how much you can approve are also parts of a good, well-founded organizational chart. So the HR roles would support each tier on an organizational chart. 
a good manager should know their responsibilities based on the flow of, of uh, business and people. So let's balance the responsibilities. What types of jobs do you need in your specific business? Jobs, roles, people. Are they common to the public? Are these common jobs? Sales, marketing, operations, IT. Are they very unique? This helps to figure out the complexity of the role. How many total staff and the positions you'll need also depends and are based upon many factors such as volume of your business, schedule of your operations, nature of the role, required supervision, et cetera. Knowing the security uh, aspects as well, how much security is based, uh, is based on the roles and the responsibilities as well. And that could be cybersecurity or even physical security. The more advanced the business, the more the org chart takes on a different meaning based on the point of view, the financial roles, the permissions, everything should be linked to this org chart. And that's a great organizational foundation for your business. So how do you conduct business? When, when you're designing and architecting a business, you need to know how will business be conducted? A comprehensive understanding is a plan uh, for success. Among these should include, where's your business located? Is there a home office and do with multiple spaces, multiple offices and so on, or are there virtual offices? During the pandemic, we've learned to have a lot of flexible work arrangement where a lot of home, home-based business. What will continue? Where will your offices be? Where will your employees uh, report to? It can be a very mixed world of physical and virtual office. And where's the actual point of sale? If you're making sales, is it physical? Is it virtual? Is it through a third party? Where is that? Where, where do your uh, consumers meet your employees for the sale? Understanding the business flows, whether or not you have direct contact with consumers is very important. Understanding what the consumer, because at the end of the day, you're trying to make sales. Consumer could be another business or it could be a, a, a person. Even in the software applications, Wi-Fi and other factors need to be brought in. When you're building a business, how, how good is the signal in your business? How good is the, is the flow of information or communication? How are your processes governed? Are you multiple state? Do you have different laws in different state, different laws in different counties, different laws in different towns? So there's a lot of things to consider about knowing what the opportunity for variance or regulation is happening within your business. It's good for the manager to understand how it relates to not only your business, but to the industry that you're in. How can you compete? It's better to compete when you know where the roles are. It's understanding also vendor management. Vendor management is a very, very important step for any business uh, manager to understand. Communication is maybe the most critical part of vendor management. Uh, understanding each other's expectation. You and the vendor need to understand each other very well because your vendors are your business partners. Don't just have a normal business relationship, have a very uh, personal one and get to know your vendors well. In an emergency, a good vendor, and a good vendor partner will always be counted on. There are plenty of support books, blogs, and information uh, opportunities out there to learn more about great practice in vendor management. Other areas that require focus, uh, depending on the size and flow of your uh, sales and marketing. So do you sell or lease your own space? Do you know your key indicators in measuring success? What are your timelines for deliverables? How do you schedule your operations? Many things that you would uh, be better off understanding uh, when you go into designing your business to understand a more fully uh, business plan. How do you market your business? Where do you market and to whom do you market? A couple of very key areas to manage. One of them is brand and one of them is change. And these are very important for you to understand. Under the brand, a good employee starts with an organized mission and value statement. A good employee base starts with mission and value statement. Understanding the mission of the company, understanding what the company stands for. The brand is the shield. That's what you protect. You protect your brand. It should be nurtured and protected by all who work in an organization. If you build in a good mission and value statement, all employees should understand what the mission statement is. And when you make change, all employees should understand how to enact and enable change. How are the components announced, enabled, enacted, or implemented when you change? How do your vendors and consumers get information on change? 
How do you make changes within your organization? And you encourage the, your employees to carry the brand, reinforce it, and carry the message of change. How is change going to affect everyone all the way down to uh, the next one in the door, the newest employee? Everyone should understand. Good organizational structure will allow for efficient communication with respect to recommended changes. And leveraging support. Where do you get your support? Trades and organizations who support your line of business can be critical to your success. Do you and do your employees and do your staff who report to you know where those best organizations and best trades are? Every position and role in the organization can probably align by title where they are and what is out there for advancement in the role, whether it's with your company, within your company, or outside your company. There's usually some group out there known as a society of XXX uh, employee or uh, for the for your employees to understand where to find their support. Internet, blogs, um, social media, conferences. There's lots of opportunity out there for people to advance themselves and advance their, and that's what a good manager would encourage and support the employees to seek out the practice or trade group where they could further develop their skills, their competencies, and feel more valued overall. The more, the more they feel encouraged and valued, the better employees they, that they will be. They will play very hard and work very hard for you. So to quickly recap the lesson, each of our lessons, we do a, a, a brief um, support center slide where we put, we put up these support areas for you to be able to uh, reference uh, and research and dive deeper into any part of your organization or your employee base. Glossary, stay on top of latest terms. Periodical, where is the news of your business discussed? Industry consultants, who do you follow? Who do you interact with? References, where is your playbook? Trade organizations, who's setting your standards? And of course, continuing support. Where do you find support for yourself or for your employees? So thank you for sharing uh, this, this uh, insight. We will be uh, doing more of these uh, as we go along. This is the first of eight. And as always, uh, to find more insight from this, you can always um, see my book here. On, it's on Amazon today, and that's my, my little promotion for myself. So I'm going to come back to the normal screen here. And we can stop the share at this point. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions? Congratulations. Your first presentation is a charter presenter on a better you. How do you feel, Mike? Well, I feel good that, that it's over. Um, you know, I learned, <laughs> uh, learned, learned a little, a few little things about myself. It's easier to be on the other side of the camera at times, uh, but that's where I've, uh, you know, there'll be more. There'll be many more of these. I've got, you know, I've got seven more in this series to go. So I hope well, I've helped some managers out there. Absolutely. You, you gave a lot of really valid points for leaders, for managers, and I, I'm happy that you shared with transparency how it felt a little awkward because it is for all of us, right? I know when I come up here behind the green screen every day, I am very nervous. <laughs> every show, I'm very nervous. I'm going to hit the wrong button or say the wrong thing. <laughs> so we all have to work through our insecurities. And um, and then that's where we get our confidence from, right? Yep, that's true. Excellent. Excellent. Diane, any feedback that you have for Mike? I, I absolutely loved it, uh, Mike. So my uh, dad had his own business and I watched him start it. Um, and then of course, all of us, I have five brothers and all of us had an opportunity to play a role in it, which gives you so much confidence when you um, are seeing how business takes place from, mm -hmm. um, he owned a vending company. So we learned how to like fix machines and just the, everything in the, and then watch it come to life and everything you were saying and i especially appreciated the whole mission statement because if an employee doesn't agree with that mission statement they don't belong there right and um, and then your whole workflow I, uh, chart i mean everything you said was so powerful i hope everybody takes every single one of your lessons because i believe we can apply what you're stating in all walks of life mm -hmm. And I'm, yeah. I'm for sure going to sign up for them. And I really <laughs> loved how you talked about um, point of view, because even when I was teaching and there used to be an absolutely, now I'm dating myself, we used to have laser discs way before the CDs. 
And oh, sure. there was actually one called Point of View. And I loved it because I could have my students learn according to first their interests, but it would be the same topic, but different mm -hmm. points of view. And when you, that really struck a nerve with me about point of view and foundation. And anyway, it was, it was fabulous. Thanks. Thanks, Diane. Philip? Yeah, Mike, I mean, the value add is just huge. And I think this is where so many people get, get things wrong uh, right across the board. And it is all about people at the end of the day. It is all about putting systems and structure into place. And a book that really resonates with me, and I've, I've, you know, I've really dined out, I shared with our students on all our programs, is a, a book that Isidore Sharp, the founder of the Four Seasons Hotel Group, uh, put together, um, which which is actually here on my desk, and it's called the Four, uh, Four Seasons: The Story of a Business Philosophy. And I would urge anyone in business to understand the importance of the words in this book. And you know, for he writes here, all business proceeds on belief. Trying to run a company without a set of beliefs is like trying to steer a ship without a rudder. And I think that is just so apt. And yep. the other thing that I've, I've taken away is that you, you need to, you need a mission statement. You need to create a culture within an organization, a culture that cares about one another, a culture that looks after one another, because you might have great buildings and premises and that sort of thing. And that's wonderful. There it is an asset value to it, but your biggest asset is your people right across the board. And the, the Four Seasons Hotel group right from the word outset is they created you know, which is pretty much uh, re uh, reiterated in every religion in the world, and that is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, what yeah. that does, what, what he introduced into the organization, he said, if you're going to take your five-star customers, that's fine, great, but we need to look after our team, our staff, like the five-star customers do. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. then you look at the back of the book and you look at the longevity, you look at the, the, the service that these managers or bellboys, all walks, all, all departments have endured with one organization. Why? Because exactly what you've just introduced to us, because it started with a vision, focus, a structure, a plan. And that's what for me is just gold. Yes, it time. is gold. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate Thank that. You. Mike, can you share with everyone how they can get in touch with you? And again, tell us the title of your book and where they can find it. The, uh, the book is called Soft Skills and Leadership, HR Insight for Managers. Uh, you can you can just Google Soft Skills and, Le and Leadership and, and my name. You'll find it right on Amazon, the Amazon bookstore. Um, it's a very easy read. And, and really what the book is, and to, to, Philip, I really appreciate your comment because one of the future lessons um, when I go through the eight different disciplines of, of HR, it's, I wrote the book like an open letter to business managers. So I really put it in business speak and I, and I made the correlation of terms uh, in, in that regard. And one of them that I do on uh, when I call it enriching the workplace, it's really diversity, equity and inclusion, but I call it enriching your work, your, your workspace and your workforce. And that's going to be one of the our, um, upcoming lessons. Uh, but that's really what it is. It's, it's about the, the business manager of today, learning more about the HR role because many small businesses can't afford to have a retained HR and internal HR, and, and they typically need HR only when they need it, which is typically too late down the performance cycle. It could be somewhere in the you know, hiring and firing uh, line rather than in the day-to-day -day, uh, business leadership. And I think it's important uh, that way. But on the Amazon books bookstore, soft skills and leadership, HR insight for managers. I'll also put my... Um, my transcript uh, online with my uh, with this uh, piece when we when we go to your uh, library, Dr. Jacqueline. So they'll be able to read it right off the transcript, which is an excerpt from the book. Each of these is a, basically an excerpt from the book. Wonderful. And your website, Mike, please. Um, right now, my website is is um, scrolling across the bottom there, oliplus.com. I don't have a personal uh, website, but we've done this from our company, and we're going to have some really good authors in there and some books that we're that we're going to start to sponsor. I'll also be in there, so my, my information is in there as well as the uh, CEO of the company. And for people on the radio, it's www.aleplus.com. Thank you so Ali. much. I appreciate that. The, uh, the, uh, and the Ali, A-L-E-E -E stands for A Life Ever Evolving. So uh, I appreciate those that are that can't see the program, but hearing it, Ali, A-L-E-E -E plus A Life Ever Evolving. We're, we're a streaming channel and a website. 
So thank Wonderful. You. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you here because you're all reflective of my brand, Dr. Jacqueline LLC, and I'm honored to have experts like you who are on our program and our charter presenters. So thank you so much. Diane and I have a show literally in less than 15 minutes. So we are going to Good sign luck. off for now. Please come and watch us fashion fitness, travel, and leisure. And our guest is joining us, I believe, from the UK, and her name is Sophie Levine. So look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks again for being here. We'll talk to you later. Thank you all. Thank you.